Hi, I'm Roshanda. I'm the creator of ArtByRow.com. And today, we're going to talk about artist trading cards, which I absolutely love. So, if you've been following me for a little bit, then you already know that I do a lot of my work on artist trading cards. So today, I want to talk to you a little bit about what they are, what the purpose is, and how I like to use them. So first of all, this is an artist trading card. It's a three and a half inch by two and a half inch. I round the corners off and then you do your artwork on them in the purpose originally for what artist trading cards were sort of created for is to trade them with other artists so the way that it would work is you post your available cards in like a group or an online forum or they can be in person there are still exist some workshops and in-person trades and you post your available cards and if somebody's interested in it, they show you what they have available for trade and you swap cards. So usually you'll do like a one for one, a two for two, a three for three, or sometimes there's swaps. There's artist trading card swaps where they're typically, that'd be a theme. So maybe there would be one that's um, a spooky theme or maybe more specific, like um, I did one uh, years ago that was a Medusa theme so everybody made Medusa cards you send them to one person if it's for a swap you so what you do is the person posts the swap topic and what the rules are so like how many cards if there's any restrictions on um, what type of media you can use or anything like that they tell you how many you need and then you make all your cards up you send them to one person and they kind of divvy them up between all the participants and you receive a random, like if you do six or seven cards, then you'll receive six or seven cards from random people from that group swap, which is really fun. And you don't know what you're going to get, um, but they're, they're really fun to do. And I like doing the multiple cards also because it helps push your creativity a little bit. So something like a group swap where you're required to make in that example, like six or seven Medusa cards, you don't want to do the same one every time. So it makes it challenging to do more um, variations of that, whatever that theme is. So that's what a group swap is, or you can do the individual, like the one for one, the two for two, the three for three, whatever the two participants agree upon. And then what you do is you take your card and you put it in a mailing envelope and you ship it off to the person. So I have all sorts of cards. I have two or three binders now that are full of them. I've been doing this for over 20 years and doing the trades. But what I found is that I really enjoy doing my work on the cards because it saves a lot of time. And then I have them, I can put them in a portfolio and in a little bit, a little further into this video, I'm going to show you both the binders for the cards that I've received from people and how I store my cards and binders and use them as a little miniature portfolio and a good way to store my artwork. And then that way, when I decide to make some trades, then I'll do those trades. So artist trading cards, very simply, are your artwork on a two and a half inch by three and a half inch card. And I just, I use cardstock because there's really only a few rules for artist trading cards. They are the size, the two and a half inch by three and a half inch. You want them to be sturdy. So you don't want to do them just on plain drawing paper and have them be very flimsy. You can do them on plain drawing paper, but then you need to mount them to a heavier cardstock. So the rules, the size, you want them to be sturdy, you want your artwork to be neat, and you trade them with other artists, which obviously you don't have to trade them. But if you do trade them, one of the rules is that you only trade your own artwork, you don't trade somebody else's. And what this means is that 
say you do a trade with somebody, you get the cards and you don't like their cards, you, you, for whatever reason, you don't really like them, you kind of get this feeling like you got ripped off in the trade or whatever. Um, it is not acceptable to take that person's card and then send it to somebody else and get rid of it. Um, if you're like me and you appreciate what other people are doing, then you realize that not everybody has the same skill level. And maybe if you get a card and you don't think they put a lot of effort into it, you need to keep in mind that that person most likely did the best that they can. I don't think there's too many people out there, and I'm sure they probably do exist, but oftentimes you're not going to get somebody who is intentionally trying to get somebody's nice artwork that they spent a lot of time on and they just want to get that card from you and they don't care what you get. I don't think that's the case too often. I think it's more that the person's um, maybe a little newer in their art journey, um, their skill level's not that great, or maybe their craftsmanship is not at the same level of yours. So you do need to have a little bit of compassion for other people when you're making the trades and take different things into consideration. So that pretty much explains what they are. Um, like I said, they are originally intended to be traded. Um, back when they were first created, they were done at workshops where you would do them live in person you would make your cards right there at the workshop and then before everybody left you would trade them with each other now with the internet uh, most people do them not in person they're done online but it's fun it's it's a good activity to get into if you're interested in seeing other people's artwork or if you just like seeing what other people do um, i find it very enjoyable and for me, I really like using them as a time saver for my artwork and as a way to store them nicely. They don't take up a lot of space. They go in a binder and that works really well for me. Working small has kind of been a life changer for me. So that is why I'm on here sharing this with you today. So in this next video clip, I'm going to show you the binder that I've traded with other artists and it's all different types and styles and medium and from all over the world. I've gotten cards from all over the world which is really neat and really the international shipping on it doesn't cost that much. I think it's like 50 cents or something to ship international or 60 cents. It's not really expensive. So um, in this next video clip I'm going to share with you the binder that I have for the cards I've received. I'll also show you my binder for how I store mine and I use it just as a portfolio for myself. And then I'll be back with you to share a little bit more about artist trading cards. This is one of the binders that I have of the cards that I've received from other artists. These come from artists all over the world all different areas um, some of them were themed trades and others were just personal one-on-one uh, -on -one trades with people as you can see there's all different types and styles a lot of different designs a lot of different medium uh, that card right there had some burning on the edges, which was really neat. There's one that is, um, it's cross-stitched with a, with a uh, picture of a squirrel in it. So that one's kind of different, a little bit unique. There's some with um, printed backgrounds. Those are kind of neat. They got the little designs over the top of them. All different kinds of stuff. Um, one that was on a playing card one that had some metal work done on it. And this one, that's one of my favorites. That's a triptych that they made that folds into a standard three and a half by two and a half trading card. So it fits within the rules that you can put it inside the, the little binder sleeve. So you can make them different sizes 
but they need to be able to fit in the the two and a half by three and a half. Uh, that particular one was from somebody who's um, who's an illustrator. A book illustrator is a career. There's different um, ones with waxes. A couple more of the cross stitching. There's a lot of different styles. A lot of different techniques that I had never been familiar with before. Uh, the ones that they use with the wax, I believe they it's called encaustic. I've never tried that, but it's interesting. That was one that was burnt into, it feels like a balsa wood. And they did a drawing of a dog, but it's actually burnt into the wood itself. And then they colored on it. It's very different. I've only ever gotten one like that, but it's one of my favorites. Um, this next card... They put little little pictures of their family. I think she, I want to say it was for a grandmother swap. And she had some old pictures of her grandmother and she made a card out of it. A lot of um, mixed media and like some scrapbooking techniques. Really when, when you're doing artist trading cards for the most part, anything goes. The only real rule is that you want them to be neat. There's one that, so that's uh, one of the wax ones, the encaustic, I believe is how you say it. You want them to be neat and you want them to be sturdy and they should fit inside the sleeves. Other than that, really not a, a whole lot of rules. Um, there might be some if you're doing a theme swap. With the group, they might have some kind of rules that they want you to follow or different things that they want to include as a requirement for the swap. It just kind of depends. It depends on the person that's leading it. But as you can see, a lot of different, a lot of different techniques, a lot of different themes, a lot of different um, subject matter, I guess you would call it. But I, I really enjoy going through and looking at these from time to time. If done correctly, you can get 10 artist trading cards out of one sheet of paper. There are a lot of different choices for paper that you can use. A heavy cardstock works best. And cardstock is available in all different colors black, there's paper tones, different colors, and of course white. You can buy them pretty inexpensively and they last a really long time, especially if you're cutting them correctly and getting 10 full artist trading cards out of one sheet of paper. To cut your artist trading cards, I found that it's easiest to use a paper trimmer. These are fairly inexpensive and can be bought from Amazon or from your local craft store. You can find the template for how to cut your paper in the PDF file for the artist trading cards. So as you can see, we're cutting the paper, the length, the long ways, at three and a half inches. And then your next two cuts across the length will both be two and a half inches. This will leave you with very little waste and will maximize the amount of cards that you can get out of one sheet of paper. After you have your first three cuts made, all that's left to do is make your cuts the opposite of what your initial cut was. So. For the strip that you did two and a half inches, the, there's two strips. Those two strips, you'll turn them the other way and cut them at three and a half. You want all of your cards to be exactly two and a half by three and a half inches. This is uniform for all artist trading cards. And this is a pretty, a pretty important rule because of how they're stored and what the expectations are for the cards. So you want to continue making your cuts so that all of your cards end up being 
the proper size two and a half inches by three and a half inches. This is fairly easy to do, and it doesn't really take that long. The cardstock you can purchase for usually about seven or eight dollars for a pack. And then you can get 10 cards out of each pack. So one pack of cardstock will, will go a pretty long way. So there you can see the finished cards. The other thing you can do if you don't like the pointed corners, you can get a corner punch that will round the edges off and you can hand punch each corner and cut the edges so that they're rounded. And by using the punch, they'll be uniform. You could try cutting them by hand, but they probably won't look as nice and the, the corner punch isn't that expensive. This is the binder that I have of my own cards. There's some random stuff at the beginning, but as you flip through it, you can start to see the cards that were from the some of the seven day themes that I did. There's some sky, skyscrapers, um, some leftover ones from the palm trees that I did, some bubble letter S's. This makes it really nice to compare from drawing to drawing. So you can put them in the sleeves together so you can see each one of your drawings. That was one for uh, letter A monsters. That was a random line exercise. But it's a nice way to, to just kind of look at all your drawings together, compare them. Some graffiti cans. And then what I'll do in the extra spots is just put some random cards in there that I have. But it's a nice way to store them. It's a nice portfolio to keep of your art if you don't want to trade them. These someday I'll. I will trade them. Um, I'm just hanging on to them for now because I don't I just I don't really have time to trade and I want to hang on to them in case I need any pictures for different stuff. I have them. I don't have to recreate anything to get pictures. But it just makes a really nice way to store them. And it's a good way to go through and just look at your artwork and look at them side by side and you can go through and just see what kind of stuff that you've done. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how well artists trading cards and doing a weekly challenge or a weekly theme, or if you want to consider it a daily theme, sometimes I refer to it as a seven day challenge, but it works really, really well if you're doing the artist trading cards or some other small form of art. So the way that these are done so what I do is every Monday, I give myself a new theme. So with this example, obviously the theme was aliens. So what I did was challenge myself starting on a Monday and going until Sunday. The challenge was to do seven different alien drawings. I do them on artist trading cards, so it makes it quicker. So this was the first one that I did. Um, I actually, I did it when somebody had requested a tutorial on how to draw an alien. And I honestly had never drawn an alien before. So I did some research, came up with some kind of a quick design for it. And then this was the first one that I did. Then the second one, I wanted to make the eyes a little bit bigger, make it a little bit more stylized. I didn't care for this one a lot. It was okay, it was an alien. I wasn't in love with it. So I did this one where I made the eyes a little bit bigger, made the area around the eyes come out more. You know, I changed it up a little bit, gave them a longer neck. I liked that one better than the first one. Then this was the third one. So these two were fairly similar. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of difference, but I kind of played around with the eye shape and the shape of the face a little bit, just trying to change it up a little bit. Then I did one where it was more of like a three-quarter profile view, 
just to do something a little different. And then I started making them even more stylized, giving them a little bit more of a personality. And then I tried to get really stylized and go for sort of like a graffiti-ish type theme feel to it. And then this was the last one that I did. So the reason that I really like doing them is because when you do a series of drawings with the same theme, it really pushes your creativity. And it gets you to work out of your comfort zone, try some different things. And I feel like they got better which, with each one. So not that there was anything wrong with the first one that I did, but had I only done the one, then I wouldn't have come up with all these other drawings that I'm a lot happier with that I think really came about nicely and I'm, I'm happy with the fact that I did it. And because I use the artist trading cards, they really didn't take a ton of time to do. So you can do them. So the aliens, not a real difficult drawing, but maybe a little bit more advanced. But then I also did them with some Christmas trees. And to be honest, I can't tell you in which order I did these. But with each one, I wanted to do something completely different. So this one I played around with the text background, which I like to do. I played around with the shapes and stylizing them a little bit more, making them a little more um, kind of abstract. This, the trunk down here is real wide and isn't how I would normally make it. This one was probably the first one I did because it was more of a just your standard Christmas tree drawing. And then kind of playing around with like a, a Grinch type of drawing. So... I really like doing these seven-day challenges or these weekly themes. I think it's a good way to really push your creativity and get some different unique drawings done. And doing them on the artist trading cards works really well and it saves you a lot of time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to artist trading cards. I also hope you feel inspired to try using them on your own. They've made a huge difference in my life and how I approach my artwork, and it's really helped me to create much more art in a lot less time and to really push myself out of my comfort zone. So I hope you'll give them a try. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy creating!